Howdy, Larkin Rose here. Um, actually starting on time, which is miraculous. The topic for today is called What We Need the World to Know. Um, hopefully it'll be fairly short, although I may respond to comments. Um, 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 yeah. There, a lot of time is spent by a lot of people, including me, arguing about all sorts of topics, everything under the sun, um, that, you know, people who like to think about ideas and like to think about concepts and, and all sorts of different fields of thought, it's perfectly fine. There's nothing wrong with it. There's nothing, you know, there's nothing that we shouldn't be thinking and talking about. Um, but when it comes to what actually matters, like what society really needs right now, there's sort of one point and one topic that I think needs to be focused on. It doesn't mean everybody should focus on that nonstop. It doesn't mean I'm going to focus on it nonstop. Obviously, I don't. On Facebook, I, I argue about and discuss eight zillion different things, um, as you may have noticed. But I think if the, you know, when you're talking about sort of fixing the world, there are so many tangential issues and little side topics that people can get distracted on and they miss the fact that the the main thing the main thing that could be done to vastly improve human society and the world we live in is one very specific thing and it doesn't and I've talked about this before it doesn't require getting everyone in the world to understand something complicated it just requires getting them to understand one lie they were taught, namely the belief in authority, and let go of that. And the thing is, there's a couple things worth mentioning about this. One is that the, the amount of differences we have about other things, whether it's uh, scientific things or, or issues of morality or like gray areas or you know whatever else, when you don't have ruling classes and when you you know, when people no longer believe in the divine right of politicians and no longer believe in the whole authority thing, it doesn't mean they agree on everything else. It's, just, it's like this whole group of people doesn't believe in Santa Claus. Well, what does that say about what they do believe? Almost nothing. You can still have disagreements about all sorts of factual and principled and philosophical things, which is perfectly fine. Uh, the thing is, doing away with the belief in authority, first of all, Obviously, it does away with the primary violator of individual rights by a massive margin. The, the, the institution that, that robs more people and assaults more people and murders more people, you know, just by a factor of I don't know how many times, that goes away. So obviously, you're removing the biggest problem from society. You know, if somebody goes to the doctor and says, hey, doctor, I have this great health regimen. I drink a tall glass of... of cyanide and, and hemlock and arsenic and broken glass but I'm feeling a bit under the weather like he's not gonna say well you should get more exercise stop drinking poison stop drinking a huge thing of poison every day and the belief in authority is poison to humanity it's poison to a civilized society and it is the biggest threat and the biggest problem so the first thing that happens if people give up that belief and why I think, you know, the primary thing people should be focused on is getting people to give up that one belief um, is obviously, so all the evil done in the name of that belief stops happening. But even beyond that, because people talk about how, you know, well, anarchists, they still disagree about things and they still argue about this and there's anarcho communists and there's this and that and the other thing removing government removes people's and removing the belief in authority removes people's ability to pass the buck to pass responsibility to somebody else so if you're in a in a society where nobody believes in the divine right of politicians you don't have a ruling class if people have differences about um, scientific or factual things or different uh, different opinions about principles or whatever else the likelihood of that becoming mass oppression is almost none. And there's a couple reasons. First of all, because most people, even if they have their preferences and opinions, they don't, they don't feel okay forcing that on others. And there are exceptions, obviously. Um, but most people don't want to go do it themselves. If they don't have a government to vote for to do it themselves, they're not going to do it. It's not going to happen. They can sit around advocating it all day, but it's not going to happen. And, it, you know, this is something I point out about um, communists, including anarcho-communists, 
quote unquote, strange concept, but whatever. Um, which is, you know, okay, so if we don't have a ruling class and they believe in the, the common collective ownership of the means of production, okay, well, they can believe that all day. What are they actually going to do about it? And the vast majority of them are going to do exactly nothing except pontificate and whine. And they can go off and, and do a, a, a commune and, and try it. I'm okay with that. Every voluntarist I know is okay with people going and trying what they want on a voluntary basis. But the likelihood that there will be like a group of communists who, without a ruling class to run to and without believing in the legitimacy of a ruling class, the likelihood that they're going to be able to impose anything on anybody is slim to none. And that's true of, of so many different things, and, you know, different religious beliefs. Well, I believe you're horrible if you do this. Even people who think, you know, well, if you, if you commit this particular sin, even if though it's a victimless crime, then you should be stoned to death. Like, let's take a, a really, you know, violent, fundamentalist, nasty religious belief. If you live in a world without a ruling class in which most people are, are voluntarists, even if you actually believe something like that, like uh, you should be stoned to death for like walking out in public in a short skirt or something, there's going to be a huge deterrent to anybody actually trying to implement that. Now, of course, uh, the, there's, you know, the big cultural thing is if you're somewhere where lots and lots of people believe that, it's more likely some are going to act on it. Um, but as... As statism falls apart, as authoritarianism falls apart, because that's still, that's just another aspect of authoritarianism. Um, and, you know, normally, the, the real problem is the belief in government, I mean, belief in authority. These days, mostly that comes out as the belief in government, and that's what does most of the damage. There are still places um, where religious or, or a combination of church and, and state are, are the problem. But most of the world, most of the Western world, it's now just government that's the problem. That's the manifestation of the belief in authority. Um, but there are still some, and it used to be that the churches were the thing violently dominating people and having crusades and, and conquests and crap in the name of authority. But it was the same problem the whole time, the belief in authority. When that goes away, if people have individual stupid beliefs that are factually wrong or morally bogus, like, I think it's perfectly okay to kill and eat my neighbors, like, people are going to resist them, and if they don't have a government to work through, most people aren't going to dare to do it on their own. Again, most, not everybody. Some people, obviously today with government, and it'll continue to be the case without government, some people will initiate violence against others, and then the good people have to defend against that. Um, but the likelihood of any large-scale implementation of these bad ideas goes way, 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 way down, even if the number of people who believe them stays the same. And an example I like to use is, is quote-unquote, gun control, which is victim disarmament. In a stateless society, a bunch of people could say, I don't think anybody should have guns. And my response is, okay, I think you're wrong, and I don't really care what you think, because I'm pretty sure you, mister, doesn't have a gun, is not going to go disarm the hundreds of millions of people who do. So I don't really care what your opinion is. Like, you don't have a big ruling class to whine to to implement your, your coercive control freak bad idea. In which case, I don't care that you want that. I don't care that you advocate that because you don't have the means to actually inflict that on people. And it's, I mean, there's so many different topics you could do this in. Like, you know, the, the you know, racism and, and, and bigotry. And I think everybody, you know, oh, send all blacks back to Africa says the European in North America, but whatever, like, there may be, like, who's going to try that? <laughs> like, you can opine that, you can say that, and yeah, there can be individuals or little groups, obviously, who commit nasty evil violence based on, on, on you know, whether it's racism or hating somebody of a religion or, or hating somebody who isn't in your religion or whatever else. But it becomes a lot more difficult and a lot more risky to do that if you don't have a government to whine to to do it for you. And so it's why I think the main thing we should focus on is just getting people to give up a bogus belief. And that's why the, you know, in, in Candles in the Dark, most of it is teaching people to get through to that one point in somebody's mind. Don't, 
don't waste time on all the you know the the economics lessons and all the the things you could nitpick about and get derailed on and arguing factual things and conspiratorial things and I mean you can argue that stuff and and think about and talk about that stuff all you want but as far as what will actually improve society it's that one focus and the reason is most people already have in them the belief that matters which is they generally believe in day-to-day -day life in the non-aggression principle and self-ownership even if they've never heard those terms. Um, if you just ask them, do you think it's okay for people to attack you? No. Do you think it's okay for you to attack people? No. Again, this isn't everybody, but it's pretty <laughs> close. Um, so they already have the belief in them, they just need a lie removed. The lie being that some people have an exemption from that, namely authority, that they have an exemption from these rules of morality that applies to you and me and all the normal people. So if you can get people to see the conflict um, between the moral code they already believe in and this political mythology they were taught that says that there's an exception to that, that is what matters. Getting that, uh, a big enough number of people to understand that matters way more than anything else, you know, in practical terms, matters as far as the future of humanity and what's going to happen from here. Um, so when people say, well, you know, look at the anarchist nitpicking about this and that and the other thing, the reason I don't care about that is if we're in a stateless society, most of that is just bickering and people can still bicker. Most people aren't going to try to enforce it on each other, you know, through violence. Um, if not because of their conscience, if not because, you know, not feeling okay about it, just because then the risk is theirs. There's no risk for somebody to vote for government to do, you know, victim disarmament or wealth redistribution or anything like that, because um, then you're just whining for a thug to do it for you. If the thug isn't there and people have to do it on their own and take the risk on by themselves, suddenly most people, they can still opine all they want and, and pontificate till they're blue in the face. Most of them aren't going to do anything about it, in which case, kind of who cares? If people believe stupid stuff but aren't going to do anything about it, aren't going to initiate violence against other people, I don't particularly care. And I'll, you know, I'd still enter academic discussions and stuff about it and talk about it because I'm not saying don't ever talk about anything else. I'm saying the thing that matters is removing that one superstition. You know, the primary thing that matters to the future of human civilization is removing that one superstition. You don't need to teach people, you know, the, the ins and outs of Austrian economics. Again, it's perfectly fine if they learn that. It's great if people are interested in that, and it's you know there's a ton to learn about a billion different topics. But if your goal is you know making the making society what it should be, the focus should really be that one thing, removing that one superstition, and then we can bicker about the other stuff. And the thing is, then the bickering hardly even matters. Like if there wasn't a ruling class, I might not even bother bickering about it because who cares? If people aren't going to try to enforce it on, on anybody else, then uh, whatever. doesn't really matter. All right. So that was fairly short. I'm going to back up and see if I can uh, respond to some comments. Okay. Love that backdrop. Here's where I have to point out something. I was trying to decide, where should I do this? I want to do it outside, but there's noise and stuff, and, and there's people driving around and stuff. So... I want to introduce you to where I'm doing this uh, Facebook Live from. I am about 40 feet off the ground in a lift. I'm working on an addition, which is right there. And uh, so, yes, I'm in this lift thing. And uh, there, there it is down there, ground 40 feet below me. So, just thought I'd... Uh, Come up here where the view is lovely and uh, have some privacy and peace and quiet. So uh, so I want to know if anybody suspected <laughs> before I just pointed that out. Probably not. It would be a weird thing to suspect. Um, all right. Let me, let me scroll up to the top and hope the comments don't jump around too much. Uh, Robert mentioning theft by deception. Um, it's funny because my video, and you can still find theft by deception in its entirety on YouTube for free. Um, and it's just about the, the legal issue of a, a fraud and deception um, built into the income tax laws. It has nothing to do with philosophy or, or morality or anything like that. Well, other than 
fraud is bad, but I mean, it, it's not about voluntarism, but it's funny how many people saw that and that sort of started them down the road to end up being anarchists, even though it has nothing to do with that. Um, and I was already an anarchist years before I learned anything about that or made that video or, or any of that. Um, all right, let me scroll down, see if I can keep track of some stuff. Um, if it's not voluntarism, it's tyranny. Uh, pretty much. If it's not voluntarism, it's involuntarism, also known as violence. Like, those are the two choices. <laughs> you either interact voluntarily or by violence. So it's funny when people when people talk about, like, well, the problem with voluntarism is, like, do you, before you even get to your point, do you realize that what you just said is the problem with not violently attacking people is that, like, okay, all right, <laughs> I guess we can talk about whatever the end of that sentence is, but are you clear about the fact that you're complaining about the idea of peaceful coexistence? You think there's a problem with it, which is weird. What about my roads? Um, let me see. Things joining, jumping around. Uh, do I have a fascist here? Somebody's chuckling about anarcho-communists. But, yeah, I think it's totally a, an oxymoron, but I don't really care. Um, and, yeah, Barbara saying took her almost a year that realized the only way to get rid of all the evil crap. The awesome thing is I was back when I was, you know, involved in politics and believed in that and was for limited government, the constitution, yada, yada, yada. Part of me knew that was never, ever, ever going to work, you know, campaigning and whining and like that the world doesn't even want that. And so it, I was bashing my head against brick wall and knew it. I was still a statist, like a, a minarchist. I knew that was never going to work. You know, I had to keep trying because I have to do something but part of me knew, you know, never in a billion years are we going to suddenly get everyone to vote to go back to the Constitution. So I assumed it's impossible to ever get there. We're never going to see justice. We're, it's going to be good old a boot stamping on a human face forever, <laughs> courtesy of George Orwell. It's like, oh, well, that sort of sucks, but I have to try what I can knowing it's going to fail. And then accidentally becoming an anarchist and figuring out, I can actually prove that everybody to be consistent has to be an anarchist. It's going to contradict what they already believe if they believe in the divine order of politicians. And it's sort of an end around, around all these weird little trivial opinions that people throw at government and what they want it to do. The end around is getting people to realize, oh, that's all bogus. Whatever I want, whatever I care about, we shouldn't be having a coercive ruling class doing that. So now you have people who used to be political left who are voluntarists, people who used to be political right who are voluntarists, people who never cared about politics who are now voluntarists. Um, it's, it's the end around all of that conflict and, and lunacy. Mass immigration is a government program. Off topic and stupid at the same time. A bunch of people walking somewhere is not a government program taxpayer-funded immigration is, but I'm not going to say any more about that on this thing. Nice troll. Um, let me see. But if government isn't exempt from morality, we'll be back in the Wild West. And that, that's a fun thing to point out, which is, you know, it, again, it's an aside, and I wouldn't usually waste time on it, but the Wild West was safer than any major city in the U.S. is now. Um, and along the way, little obvious things occurred to me. Like, what about the shootout at the OK Corral? And it didn't occur to me until years and years later. Why do we even know about that? Because it was really unusual. Like, nobody knows, remember that shootout in Detroit? What, the five that happened today? No, nobody remembers any of them because they happen constantly. The reason... The, the shootout at the OK Corral is famous is because it was really unusual for that sort of thing to happen, unlike today. So, yeah, I'm all in favor of the wild, wild west as compared to this. Um, all righty. Let me see if anything else, as the sun goes down here. Oh, sorry. As the sun goes into the distance and gets so... <laughs> sorry, I shouldn't even bring that up. Tempting the trolls. Um, where did that comment just go? Oh, 
all of this requires a, a, a Matt McCormick saying the problem is as soon as the debate with the status reaches the point of them um, realizing the hypocrisy of authority, they shut down. The thing is, oh, they don't. Darn it. They, this is go to a candles in the dark event. Um, Oh, by the way, I should totally be mentioning, um, if you go to LarkinRose.com and go to the store, there are now tickets ready for the um, New Hampshire one, which is happening July, the Washington State one, which is happening August, and the Denver, Colorado one, which is happening September. Um, so you can go get them now. Um, why was I just saying that? Oh, because at the, at the Candles in the Dark thing, one... One thing we cover is to know what to to know what your agenda and what your goal should be in talking to statists and to know what's a sign of success and sort of the default that people don't even think about is well I'm going to talk to this person until they say you're totally right I completely agree that like almost never happens in the first discussion but there are indications that if they shut down and freak out there are ways to make it so you did get something through and it actually did some good even if it didn't seem like it at the time. And so part of it is discussing, you know, watching for things that, that showed that, yes, you actually did get through to them. Whether they responded calmly or by having a tantrum, there are indications that you actually made them uncomfortable with their contradiction, and that's kind of all you can do. You bring them to that point, and then you can try it again later and stuff. Um, but don't assume that just because they, they freaked out and disagreed and ran away that it didn't do any good. Because, you know, having been doing this for 20-some years, I can't count the number of times that somebody, some status seemed like they just weren't paying any attention, completely thick-headed, and, you know, in the, in the heat of battle while we're in debate, they didn't budge an inch. They showed no sign that they were grasping anything. And then later they came back, and it, it was suddenly really obvious it actually sunk in. They actually did hear it. So don't assume that the status didn't comprehend what you said just because it made them so uncomfortable that they freaked out and ran away, you know, the first time you had the conversation, or the second or the third time. Um, and Kendall's in the Dark gets into how to, how to sort of manage that, what to look for, what to try to accomplish, um, and how to measure what's actually success, which is actually counterintuitive, because you'd think success would be the person go, uh, going, yeah, you're totally right, I'm totally wrong, never mind, government's illegitimate. But that's not, that's almost never how it goes. That's not how I became an anarchist. You know, that's not how 99% of the people I know who are now anarchists got that way. They didn't get talked into it in one discussion. Most of the thinking and the processing happened when nobody was talking to them. So you have to plant the seed and then let it do what it does when you're not there. So, so that's one of the, the main things that, that Candles in the Dark gets into. Nice. Matt McCormick also recognized the guardrail immediately. <laughs> Elevated work platform technician. <laughs> well, you had, you had sort of an unfair advantage. This one's really cool. It's an art, articulating lift. It goes 45 feet up. And uh, I need it for uh, working on the side and the trim of this, uh, the metal edging of this edition. So one person recognized it. A sunbelt, holy smokes, you're good. That is indeed, it's a sunbelt rental. Yay. No, I'm not starting over. <laughs> um, <the, laughs> Brian saying, the problem with consent, just stop. Uh, exactly, the problem with voluntarism is like saying, well, the problem with having people's consent and asking them what they want to do. And, uh, let's see, stupid troll saying nothing. Yeah, here come the trolls. Oh, I know, I, I'll do a trollectomy. I should do a, the whole other one. From Walker just said, um, if you knew limited government wasn't going to work, how on earth do you think anarchism is practical or feasible? I should do a, a different one about that instead of starting while the sun's going down. Because um, it's, it's kind of a good question. Um, enjoying reading my book to my nine-month-old son. Yay, raising him right. Uh, let's see. When does the mirror launch? I have no freaking idea. I've been working a bunch on um, Candles in the Dark, and that's, you know, if we get people going to that, that can fund me working on the mirror, because um, the, the 
the people throwing money at me for for to work on that fluctuates a whole bunch. It was going really well for a while, and now it's down a bunch. Um, so I work in it when I can, but it's still a uh, I don't nearly dare to guess a a release date for it, um, even though it's it's cruising along nicely. Um, let's see if there's anything else before I should run away. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Give me the wild, wild west. Um, yes, the government did slaughter the Native Americans in the wild west, which was the primary problem with the wild, wild west. And it was courtesy of the frickin' ruling class. Um, they point that out when I talk about the the actual example example of anarchy that you can read in the Little House books by um, Laura Ingalls Wilder, um, which were a first-hand account. The TV show TVified it, but the books were a first-hand account of a stateless society on the frontier, um, mostly stateless, except in the background there's U.S. government agents violently attacking the Indians who live there. So uh, that wasn't too pleasant. Um, alrighty. Well, <laughs> when should you shoot a politician? Maybe I'll have to do one about that too, the thing that just happened today. My short answer, this is, well, I don't care if it sounds me. Short answer, I don't care that that happened. Like, other people got shot today, you know, here and all over the world, and I don't at all think it deserves more attention or compassion because somebody was shooting at politicians. Like, I don't like the fact that people were endangering a crowd full of people. I don't even know the details of, um, but I saw somewhere they they fired 60 rounds and got three hits. Oh, and it was a Bernie supporter. <laughs> so I guess that's why he's such a bad shot. Um, so, but like with all the crime going around, I don't think it's more important to talk about and care about it when the, the targets are politicians. Um, if anything, it matters less to me. Um, alrighty, so I guess that's about it. I will now jump out of my lift and do a swan dive. <sighs> Just kidding, but look at this lovely view. Alrighty, over and out. See you later.